Okay, we're back. We're live. This is Think Tank on a given Friday. This is Trump Week. Trump Week. Every week is Trump Week, seems like, isn't it? Uh, Tim Apicella, my co-host, and Cynthia Sinclair, my co-host. Thank you, you guys, for coming down. Thank you, Jay. You know, just a few words here. You know, sometimes things are exactly as they seem to be. Sometimes what appears to be Looney Tunes is, in fact, Looney Tunes. And we have to keep our heads straight about that. You know, what we have now, we have something like 120 days without a press conference. We get en passant in front of the helicopter where a given president can always say that he didn't hear the question. Right. <laughs> but, you know, we're going to focus on some of those statements he makes, including this week in front of the helicopter, right. which, you know, that's from the heart. No teleprompter in front of the, in front of the uh, helicopter. So, we, you know, we want to hear what he has to say from his heart. Um, the other thing is I want to say is that a, a president, uh, in fact, any executive in the 21st century has to surround himself uh, with, 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 a, with a brain trust. The, the smarter, the better, the more experienced, um, you know, the, the more equipped, competent, uh, the brain trust, the better the decisions. And we've learned this. We've learned this in, in a whole history of humanity, and, and we don't have that. We have a president who surrounds himself with yes men or worse. And so what we have is, uh, as I've said before, a sole proprietorship government, and it's all Trump. Uh, he, he knows how to keep the focus on him. He knows about, um, you know, um, keeping the attention on him, but query, does he know how to govern? And, and then the, the question today is, can he? Is he competent to govern? Okay, Tim, you first. Well, you always can tell when it's been a tough week for the staff, because if you look at their forehead, There'll be finger imprints like this, you know. Um, you always can tell what week it's really been. Uh, the bottom line is there are so many um, things that Trump has either tweeted about or has spoken on the way to the helicopter that is, it is Looney Tunes. I mean, it's off the rail. But I guess I'll just back up a little second and say, should we be surprised? Didn't we not know we were going to get this um, when he was running as a candidate? However, I don't think anyone expected for it to be this bizarre and this surreal with this president. Um, so I've got a number of things that he's done this week that you're just going to go, you know, I just can't believe it. Mm. That's why we're calling this show, uh, <clears throat> Is It Time to Invoke the 25th? Because they, they talked about it uh, a year, a year and a half ago, and everybody blew that off as uh, over the top. Uh, well, let's remind people what now, the 25th is. Yeah, please. Well, the 25th basically says you're not capable of performing the duties of your office. Yeah. And it's almost like an impeachment. I mean, you need so many different um, uh, staff to agree to that and actually vote that you need to be replaced either temporarily or permanently. Yeah. Okay. So that's the question before the House today. Now, um, <clears throat> let Cynthia go first. Do you have any indication this week or up to this week that this president is not competent to do his job? Oh, constantly. His um, rampant narcissism is part of what makes him not qualified and makes him dangerous because people like that. And the further we push him into the corner, if he hears about things like people thinking about the 25th Amendment, he's going to become more and more and more dangerous as we push him back into the corner. And that's what worries me the most, because we've got so much impending possible wars going on throughout the world. I was just listening to NPR, and things are devolving in Afghanistan. Yes. And uh, there, was one, there was one expert at the War College uh, who said, uh, it was impressive, she said, like the Russians, we're going to have to fight our way out to survive the troops that are trying to leave. Bad decision what he did there. He doesn't know. He doesn't have people around him who tell him the truth. You know? Well, I've got a list of specific items, but let's get back to this uh, exit of Afghanistan. Yeah. Remember, he bludgeoned President Obama by Obama saying, we're going to try to exit by such and such a date. Well, hasn't Donald Trump done the exact same thing? Exact same thing. Right. Yes. That's the mark of a demagogue. When I do it, it's right. When you do it, it's wrong. It is right. the mark of a demagogue. Right. Yeah. Okay, well, well, so let's, let's, go, let's, go down, let's go down number one. I mean, I, I call it tr Trump doubles down on the Jewish people. And he basically said anyone who's Jewish that votes Democrat are disloyal to Israel and to the Jewish people. Yeah, well, well you can first take off, who is he to say? <laughs> anybody who opposes him, anybody who speaks against him, any Democrat is disloyal to the United States of America. 
That's the ultimate logic of what he's saying. I find that, uh, I find that really incredible. Uh, as you said, he's gone off the rails. Uh, he's done great disservice to the state of Israel. He's done great disservice to the Jewish people. He's done great disservice to the country with all this mishigas. That's the Yiddish word. Okay, what else you got? Trump retweets and thinks conservative conspiracy theorist, I, um, I forget his name offhand, but basically um, he is retweeted, ret retweeted and thanked him for saying, I am um, the king of Israel and the second coming of God. Yeah. Okay, I don't know. Okay, I, I remember a president saying, I'm the decider. But we now have a president that repeats himself over and over again, I'm the chosen one. Okay, yeah. so he's starting to buy into all, all this hype about he's the second coming of God and the king of Israel. <laughs> Come on, folks. Well, that's nutcakes. Well, when but what's so worse is that we're supposed to have a First Amendment, you know, the uh, Establishment Clause, keeping church and state, state separate. separate. So that's being mushed, and it was bad enough under W, but now it's way worse. We have a, we have a, a guy pro proclaiming himself uh, the God, essentially. Well, one of the worst things in that, too, is because his base is mostly evangelical Christians, right? And how they could just throw away everything that they have believed for all these years um, and just throw it away. And I don't know so it as speak well Christian... For them. Or, or any of the, you know, Christian denominations, yeah. because it's just undermining everything. So all of these, you know, very established denominations are just going away. That's a good point. I, you know, as he basically, um, basically threw out words of hate and warnings of hate about the immigrants coming across the border, which I believe did result in a shooting at El Paso. Um, in a sense, he's starting to do that with the Jewish people. He's trying to separate their loyalty to the, you know, to Israel. our democracy, and he's trying to cast them in a very negative light. And God forbid someone from his white supremacy uh, followers and or other groups starts to act on these words. Fanning the flames. It's already happening. It's happened. It is happening. And there are people out there who, who buy what he has to say. The other thing he did this week was just absolutely incredible. The birthright, citizen, oh, right. citizenship by birthright. If you were born in this country, you are a citizen. It says that in the United oh, States right. Constitution or in one of the amendments, I think the 14th Amendment. If you are born in the United States, you are a citizen. He is now questioning that. Right. He doesn't want that to be the case. He's going to rewrite the Constitution of the United <laughs> no, States not. by himself. He's going to try. <laughs> Executive orders get you somewhere, but it doesn't get you everywhere. But it shows you where he is. Yeah. He's above the law. He's above Obama's, you know, regulations. He's above Congress's previous statutes. And now he's above the Constitution of the United States. And he is God. So let's thread this one. Um, is this just getting ready for the 2020 election and he's just pumping the, he's priming the pump for his 35%, 36% loyal base? I mean, is this just red meat and he's just trying to throw more out there? Or is he really... You know, decomp you know, decomposing in front of our very eyes. I can't imagine his base, you know, increasing, but it's, it's possible because uh, some of these religious comments that he makes, um, uh, apparently, I mean, some commentators have said he does this um, for them. He does this for the evangelicals. Right. And they, in turn, like it. I'm not sure that's true, but that's what some of the commentators are saying. It's very troubling that this could be successful. Some of this craziness could be successful in expanding his base. You had more? When I was in Alabama, his base is pretty strong down there. And they're all the, let's go to church on Sundays. And I don't quite understand how they can just look the other way to his, you know, his misogyny. All of the incredible number, plus 20 plus people that have come out for sexual misconduct. Well, we're doing rape. a show about that this we afternoon, are doing aren't we? That this afternoon. And we're asking whether Trump should be uh, uh, put on the uh, sex offender registry, given his relationship with Epstein and Epstein's uh, underage friends. Right, and some uh, of his own quotes. And we'll go uh, into the details. Other, you know, yeah, we'll go into the details of that as we get to the show later yeah, so on. So we got hate, but... and we got misogyny, and we got crimes, lots of business crimes, and personal crimes, and sexual right. abuse crimes, and yet. 
there, there are people in the evangelical base community like Christians. Who, 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 who say they're Christian, who, who support everything he does. This is really incredible. Yeah. It's, it's madness. Uh, does madness. it remind you of Germany, or is he just decompensating into a, a completely incompetent... Uh, it reminds me of Germany and the fact that he took away, and so it's indefinite detention now. Some of these kids... Used to be there was a set number of days that they could be in there, 20 days or 40 days, 20, or 20 days, I think it was, yeah. And now it's indefinite. They can keep these kids as long as they want. What's going to happen to these children? Well, all these crazy decisions, I, mean, I, don't, you want, I don't know if you want to call them executive orders or not, they're all going to be challenged in court. But by the time it gets through the court system, right. his, his term, first term, will be up. Right. You know, so he gets through this craziness knowing that it's going to be tied up in the court because he's an expert in court. That's, you know, how many times does he use the court to get what he wants? Right. You, you, right. Throw, you throw lawyers at it. You throw money at the lawyers. Um, and you double down on everything. You never admit anything. It's, it's perfect. Yeah. You don't it, have to what, pay any bills. You never have to pay your contractors. None yeah. of that. So let's okay, go. You have more. Look at three. I mean, um, he throws our, our long-established ally under the bus, uh, Denmark. Because they just said, you know, we own we own Greenland, and we're going to keep it, and it's kind of absurd for you to, you know, basically say you're going to buy it because not even it's not it. yours to buy because it's ours. We own it. We'll and it's over sale. And it's like, and not even he didn't say kind of absurd. She said absurd. it's absurd, yeah. and that's what made him mad. That's what made him really upset. Yeah. And of course, and he referred to her as as he nasty. many yes many other women yep. as, as nasty. That's um, part of the show, too. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I'm right. sorry. I didn't no, need to no, take no, one. No, no, no. need to okay, say sorry. Okay, let's take a short break, you guys. We'll come back. We'll, <laughs> we'll finish. There's lots more. We're only going to have a six-hour Trump week today. <laughs> <laughs> Is that all? That's all. Can I'll you come right back at three? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. My name is Walter Kawai. I, uh, I'm your host for our monthly uh, live streaming video uh, entitled Ukulele Songs of Hawaii where I bring on guests. We enjoy talking story about the music industry here in Hawaii, uh, sometimes going back uh, 50 decades if possible, and uh, always having some good fun talking with entertainers. We're here located at Think Tech Hawaii, downtown Honolulu at the Pioneer Plaza building and uh, in their studios. And so join me next month for Ukulele Songs of Hawaii. Aloha. My name is Wendy Lowe, and I want you to join me as we take our health back. On my show, all we do is talk about things in everyday life, in Hawaii or abroad. I have guests on board that would just talk about different aspects of health in every, in every way, whether it's medical health, nutritional health, diabetic health, you name it, we'll talk about it, even financial health. We'll even have some of the Miss Hawaii's on board and all the different topics that I feel will make your health and your lifestyle a lot better. So come join me. I welcome you to take your health back. Mahalo. Okay, we're back with more and we agreed we're gonna, we're gonna put the, we're gonna shoehorn the six hours into 15 minutes. Okay, but there's so much material to suggest that Trump is actually decompensating and he's becoming more Looney Tunes. Uh, and the last question I'll put you on notice now is what happens? What happens when he becomes completely incompetent and unable to run the country? If that hasn't happened already. Okay, you have more indicia. So let's talk about the indicia. All right, well, remember a good friend, a guy named Vladimir Putin and a little country called Russia? Remember, Russia used to be part of the G7, and then they were summarily ex they were told to pack their bags because they invaded Crimea. And also, you know, he poisoned a few people along the way, and, you know, he basically was hack hacking into our 2016 election. So Russia's no longer part of the G7 for a reason, a very, very good reason. They're not our friend or ally. They're a rogue nation. They're a rogue nation. Yes. Just out of all the possibilities, try to guess who wants them back in as a G7 member. They got the first some, two guesses don't count. <laughs> they, get, they got something on him, I tell you. It's in the steel dossier somewhere. They got something on him. Anyway, yeah, okay, so he's alone in that regard. It's not going to happen. The other members of the G7 are never going to agree to that. Um, but it's, again, a provocation and puts him in the top 20 news articles in the Times. But now in this case... 
who, who, what audience is, you know, giving the thumbs up that Russia should be in the G7? Can't be its base. I mean, unless they're completely know. been converted to saying Russia is our great, great friend and ally. I don't know what, what constituency is on board with this concept of um, Russia in the G7. Nobody. Russia. Russia, yeah, I guess you answered the question. <laughs> there Russia. was an article that they put out in a Russian newspaper that he's all excited about the fact that Trump wants him back in the G, what, G8, right? I wonder if he wrote love letters like uh, Chairman Kim did. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you I probably, read some love letters in a drawer somewhere that we haven't seen. You can probably I, find I, things that are very similar to what Trump has said about, uh, about Kim Jong-un yeah. with respect to uh, Vladimir Putin. Same kinds of, you know, yeah. he loves me, I love him sort of thing. Okay, what else? Well, this is a big deal with the missile test that went wrong uh, over there yeah. in Russia because there are people that are finding, there's even a doctor that had um, nuclear radiation in his bloodstream and all he did was work on the people. Uh, you know, so it's, and now they're trying to say that he, Eat bad seafood. Eat that is Trump is human. saying this. Trump is human. ignoring right. the risk of nuclear, and he's also ignoring climate change. He's right. ignoring it. Even now, when it's Completely. becoming ever so clear, and look at what's happening with Bolsonaro land, Bolsonaro land in Brazil. Oh right. Jair Bolsonaro right. Right. is right. is responsible, absolutely, just as Trump is responsible for denying climate change and encouraging people, you know, to exploit. Uh, the resources in the uh, in the river valley there, and uh, in the what do you call it, the rainforest. Right. And, and now we have I don't know something like fifty thousand fires um, burning in Brazil, the, the lungs of the world, right? Yeah. And Trump hasn't said anything about no, that because he's on Bolsonaro's side. Yeah. They're buds. He's got some really bad friends. It's some uh, bad friends. Okay. Anyway, more. More. Okay. Well, indicia, yeah, indicia of incompetence. Okay. All right, let's yes. go down to his recent statement about, remember he said how the people of Dayton and El Paso loved him and the doctors loved him. Well, he basically said that the staff left the operating rooms and wanted to come out and greet him and that they were doctors were coming out of the operating rooms. There were hundreds and hundreds of people all over the floor. You couldn't even walk on it. Okay, so... Ryan Milkey, spokesman for the University Medical Center in El Paso said, our priority is always patient care. At no time did or would physicians or staff leave active operating rooms during a presidential visit. So who's Zoom and who? Um, I, I think when he did that en passant in front of the helicopter, he was lying. But then you know it wasn't the only lie that he does in front of the helicopter. The whole thing was a lie. You know, there are people who believe that. And the, it's the obligation of the press to call him on it. But what's troublesome about it is that he makes it up out of thin air. In fact, the reports at the time, you know, were headline, nobody wants to talk to him. Right, don't they, come. They were right. responsible. So they he should leave me alone yeah. kind of thing. Right. You know? right. Well, this is, you know, this is the narcissism that you're referring to. If you, if you call week after week after week, everyone loves him. Whether it's Chairman Kim or, you know, everyone just loves him. And he's got to tell the world, the news, everyone, um, that he's loved. And, and who doesn't love me? Okay, so big psychological question. Why does he need to do this? Why does he have to have everyone love him? And, and it seems to be increasing. Right. This, 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 it becomes all-consuming for him to find people or create people who he says love him. He's, he, he's not loved enough, clearly. Yeah. He, does, he doesn't have enough love. So what does this mean? Don't give me a psychological diagnosis. Uh, give me, don't? I was going to. I don't know. Do. <laughs> all right, okay, all right, give me a No, psych. no, that's okay, because it goes back to narcissism. It's just a classic thing that narcissists do. I mean, any you know, run-of-the-mill narcissist is going to be like that. They does he want... believe what he says? Um, I believe he does, yes. He is, believes his own lies. I was talking before about having a brain trust around you, you know, that can help you test the limits and come with good decisions. And all. He doesn't have that. He's, he's excluded all that. He doesn't have that. He hasn't had that for a while. At the same time, he's making lies, and he believes the lies. How can you make good decisions, decisions which affect the lives of billions of people, when you're lying to yourself and nobody's there 
you know, it gives you pushback. Uh, I'll just go back to the old saying you was talk talking about years ago. I alone can only fix this. And he really does believe he's the only person in the United States that can fix all its problems. Remember, when the generals left, uh, you know, um, Madoff, and when they left, those were the bookends of, of, of rational thought that kind of contained him from acting the way he's acting this week. But they're all gone, and they've been replaced with loyalists. And loyalists will never be a critical thinker or say critical statements because they'll no longer be seen as loyal. So he is the mad king that basically has a mad staff. Yeah. So, but, but there's a process happening. There's a, there's a trend. There's a sea change here. It's yeah. getting worse. Did we, it is getting did we worse. Getting worse. Yeah, definitely. definitely getting okay. worse. Somebody really should look into uh, the 25th Amendment and see what the mechanics are. Who has the vote? You know, right. you have to have a doctor's certificate. <laughs> <laughs> you mean for his bone spurs or for his up here? You know, which one? Bone spurs on the brain. Spurs yeah. in his head, yeah, okay. right. Okay, more indicia. <laughs> well, let's, let's talk about what he did to the Fed here this week. I oh mean, he gosh. hit the Fed. He basically, in the quotation, is this. Um, who is our bigger enemy? Jay Powell, the chair. Jay Powell who or... Who he appointed. Yes, who he appointed. <laughs> Or Chairman Z. Who's the bigger enemy, China or our own Fed chair? We have a very strong dollar and a very weak Fed. I will brilliantly with, work with both, as we will do. Well, do you think doubling down can save the economy? No. No. Simply no. No, because it's, it's coming true now. The farmers in Indiana are losing it. I mean, they're, they're going bankrupt. They're going out of business. Uh, they, they, and they've... You know, they've supported him all this time, but they're not supporting him now. Um, and and you, have, you have all the promises that were made. I'm going to work it out with North Korea. No, I'm going to work it out with China. Much worse. And he hasn't stopped them from their initiative in any way. Um, in Europe, he's, he's busting Europe. Um, if he goes to the G7, uh, if he appears there, he's going to make a mess, I guarantee it. He's hurting all of our... Uh, allies in our relationship, our alliances everywhere in the world, that people are laughing at him, and thus laughing at us, and thus making arrangements and alliances with others, like the Chinese and the Russians. I mean, we are really losing it. We are no longer, you can quote me, the leader of the free world. He, is, he has abandoned that. He has actually single-handedly destroyed it. And the question is, can we ever get it back? The question is, um, in his need for narcissism, will he be able to, to do anything constructive? Or are we going to see a real closet case? Is he going to need help from those very same doctors in El Paso? <laughs> well, I well, know that the Dow was down almost 500 points, and, that, was, point. and that wasn't it wasn't even the end of the day yet, right? And well, let's look, when let's, I left my house, down 500, yeah. well, 493. Well, let's, let's look at exactly why today. Um, when you, and if you're a farmer, you're going to love this statement. Now remember, China retaliated. They're going to do right. some tariffs on $75 billion. As Trump early said, I'm going to tax 10% on $300 billion. So, you know, this is a trade war. So here's what Donald Trump said today. We don't need China, and frankly, would be far better off without them. That was a tweet this morning. Um, if you're a farmer, and you know that 90% of your market has been going to China for sale, You've got to be devastated because he is now closing the door as China as a trade partner. He's closing their farms. He's shutting down their yeah, farms. They don't have a market. Farms. They don't have anybody to sell it to. There's nowhere else they can sell it. Right. But remember, a lot of these farmers are his loyal followers. It's, it's going to be hard to them to follow in bankruptcy. Yeah. You know, they're not going to be able to claim he's done a great job when you, know, you look across the landscape of the Midwest and they're all bankrupt. That's who I truly feel sorry for is the farmers right now. I really do. They, um, yeah. And it's... It's unnecessary, and it was unnecessary. Yeah. When I heard that comment about how we don't need China, I thought, well, we sure better hope that they don't decide they want us to pay our loans back right now then, because don't we owe them a lot of money? They don't even have to do that, Cynthia. All yeah. they have to do is stop buying new bonds. Yeah. yeah. Just let them mature. So, just like, yeah, and then we're in trouble. And then we have to pay them off. Yeah. The maturation, yeah.
So, okay, we only have a couple of minutes left, and I, I wanted to get to the most heady question of all is, where, where is this going? The lies and the, uh, the obfuscations and the doubling down on these, you know, incredible disinformation statements every day, multiple times. Where is it going? It seems to be getting, you know, remember the newspaper used to count the lies? Over 12,000. They, they don't do it. I mean, do they? But, you know, yeah, it's over 12,000 now. 12,000. I think they're still keeping count, but we're just not seeing the headlines on that anymore so because we're, yeah, we're, 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 we're Trump fatigued. Yeah, right. It's <laughs> right? true in so many Trump ways. fatigued. So where's it go? He's believing himself. Uh, people still believe him. Uh, he's got yes men surrounding him. He's making, you know, terrible decisions. Uh, and he's crazier every day. So where does this go? Are we going to be okay? Are we going to be able to get to 2020? What's the damages that, which is going to be incurred between now and 2020? How much more damage can he do? You asked this question you, you know, many, many months I, ago I may when we were talking again, about again. impeachment. And you said, if they don't do it now, how much damage can they do by waiting? Well, the same, the same question and answer holds here right now. If they don't do something about his madness, how much more damage can this president do upon this country, both domestically and internationally? A lot. He can do a lot. Look what he's done in one week. Just this one week. And if you multiply that by, you know, and then think, don't forget about what Michael Cohen said about how he's not going to leave the White House easily. He's not going to leave, you know, peacefully. Scared. And, and so I am scared about what will happen. I believe that he will manipulate the, um, the outcome of the votes, whether you know, Russia's involved or not, doesn't really matter at this point, because his, his people are in place, like you said, everywhere, his yes men, everywhere, the state controllers, everywhere, that count the votes. So how do we trust our votes when we have no security, no election security? We have none. There's none been voted on, so how are we going to do that? And remember, the reason he doesn't want to leave office is because they know he's going to be prosecuted for criminal right. offenses after he leaves office. And that won't just be federal, federal offenses, but also state offenses. Which, okay. which he has no control. He has which no control. Over him. Even if he worked out a deal with someone, they won't be able to pardon him for the state stuff. Yeah. So I want to know if we can get Neil Katyal back in there to rewrite the memo so it's not the same memo that says you can't you know, prosecute a sitting president. Who is the damn memo? Excuse my language. It's but, only an internal <laughs> DOJ uh, yeah. policy. It's, it's, not, it's why, not the law. Why does it apply? It's easy to break a law, but it's apparently a memo. It's, it's sacrosanct. It's just, you I know. What it's the heck? A, a, come from Mount Up High. Okay, so, so, so I don't get it. What I get from you guys this week is that these processes we're talking about is, you know, overarching decompensation. You're not the only ones who feel that way, really. A lot of people I know feel that way. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's going to continue. The decompensation will continue. And that means, uh, and this is my last question, that means we'll, we'll see more of it next week, the week after, the week after that. Uh, and actually, it will overshadow or at least compete with the attention of the American public as against the Democratic primaries. <sighs> Uh, rather, the Democratic, um, you know, uh, debates and, and, and attempts to get elected, campaigns. So what will happen next week and the week after, given a decompensating president? Any thoughts on that? You I have first. one. Okay, I have one. Um, I believe that he is trying to instigate a, a riot. Um, I don't know what else to call it exactly, but a riot where... There's so much rioting in the streets. You've got the white supremacists here. Then you've got the Antifas over here. So there's riots in the street. I better declare martial law. And, wow. and I think he's been trying to trigger this for a long time. Well, and he's been it. working it and working it and working it. And all of his hate speech, which is getting more and more and more intense, is causing more and more and more of this. And so because of the El Paso shooting, now Antifa is more um, vocal than they were before. And Portland, I was really wondering what was going to happen in Portland this last week, or was it, yeah, last week, to see what was going to happen. They, they handled it pretty well. They Portland. handled it really well. And there was not, only... Not a, for his help, though. Okay, right, we're almost him. out of time. Right, almost out of yeah, time. Sorry. Well, a lot of times psychological issues don't run just with psychological issues. They manifest themselves in medical issues physical medical issues. We don't know. If this thing continues to get worse, we may be dealing with a president that has some medical crisis. 
I'm not predicting it, but you just don't separate one without the other sometimes. Very interesting thought. Okay, Tim, Tim Mappicella, Cynthia Sinclair, Trump Week. Let's be back next Friday and find out what happened in the course of the week between now and then. Ooh. All right. Thank you so much. You <laughs> Thank you. See you next Thank week. Thank you, Jay. See you next week. <laughs>